here we go. So my name is David Hall, the Managing Director of Cloud IT, and we're joined by Steve Walker, who, who heads up our local government strategy. So Steve, um, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I've known and worked with David for a long time now. Uh, we've, we've spent a lot of time promoting a Microsoft apps and, and the Microsoft system to uh, many people and with uh, my role as a, count, a local councillor and, and chair, luckily chair of my local councillor for my sins, I get to see it from both sides. I see it from both the technical side, you know, the, the commercial side and how councils operate and what, and what councils need. And this came together perfectly, didn't it, David, when we started to look at these apps that were focused on councils, you know, the, the jobs that we do of management of allotments, the management of parks, the management of green spaces and cemeteries. These were all important things to councils that were either covered by an app that was exceptionally expensive, especially for smaller councils to justify, or the app was something for another purpose that that had been adjusted to fit. Whereas we, we felt that we could do a better job, I hope. And, and as a result of that, we 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 got where we are so yeah it's an honor to be heading up this you know this part of cloudy and and, and doing what we do absolutely exactly and you couldn't be better place being a councillor chair yourself you just get the sector which is so important so um so uh just a bit about cloudy really before we start um obviously today is going to be about talking about the apps the ones that are included in your subscription or the ones that cloudy have built with our council partners and and, and industry partners like microsoft and rosper but um, a bit about Cloudy. So Cloudy, uh, we're a very fortunate business. We look after 123 councils now, uh, and uh, we, you know, we look after SLCC now. We do their IT systems and telephony, and, and all the things we talk about here. Three six five. We've got a big agenda to really modernise the sector. That's what we're really here to do. We provide five key services. That's uh, uh, modern apps for councils. That's what we're talking about today. So park inspections, allotments, and uh, some exciting news about cemeteries app that's on the horizon as well. Uh, some said so they're getting so excited about cemeteries this sounds a bit wrong i don't know why but yeah so but any cemeteries app but we do also agenda pack solutions so we have a, a product called decisions which allows you to build an agenda pack really quickly on 365 distribute it do all your follow-ups has a wonderful little app on your mobile phone for the councillors to use uh, and steve heads it up as well so we do agenda pack solutions um we do it support and training our bread and butter but you know we had a, a clerk take over from a, a, a another clerk at accounts we look after and um she thought she said i thought you just did it and it's not no we, we do the full wraparound service so we we really want to make sure you get the most out of 365 and it's not just a an email or a, a cloud host you know a, a storage solution it's a it's a full productivity suite and you know making sure you get value for money you and your council is so important and there's so much to learn you got you know time is is, is precious uh so we do a lot around training and it supports bread and butter stuff for us and uh, we also do broadcasting for council meetings really popular at the moment we're just a down in Essex near Chelmsford uh, at the SLCC Essex branch broadcasting or hybrid doing a hybrid meeting for them and helping them out so broadcasting is really big uh, we've heard held about 35 councils since April with new equipment uh, really low cost and we could talk about that if everyone ever needs to and finally web accessibility web design and accessibility to websites as well so that's our suite of services um, and uh, you know our plan as I mentioned earlier, is about digital leveling up it's looking at the sector and working with councils with partners to really improve the productivity throughout and take all these different um, you know different tools at your disposal and give you some direction and focus and support as you you know utilize them within your council and and start to see those benefits and we were joined by linda chandler the local government executive from microsoft at practitioners conference who was talking about you know smart parishes smart towns hyper local economies uh, real buzzy word stuff but actually really interesting and if you are you know uh, part of the slcc uh do it's a private video but but you know if you if you're a member you can get access to it do go and have a look lisa has also a linda sorry apologies has also written a blog on our website which is really interesting uh it takes five minutes to read but very very thoughtful uh, piece of work as well so as we're talking about smart cities to smart places obviously you know we're trying to to encourage you know not just cities national global but regional towns and parishes to become smart to do more with less you know you, you know you can't be more 
you know, take on more services by just throwing bodies at problems. You need to find new services, new ways to deliver them. And it has to be digital. And um, what we're starting to see with the technology that's available to all of us, 365, is the ability, you know, because it is affordable to deploy these really smart technologies. So, you know, where we want to be, you know, we were talking about this, Steve, weren't we, you know, having the virtual clerk, you know, um, and uh, we're talking about the technology being um, things like virtual agents, um, and uh, machine learning and AI can allow you to be more productive for your time. And we're going to show you some of those things as well. So, uh, Steve, this is where you, you're going to take over and start delving into the apps and stuff. So I'm going to turn my camera off and mute myself. But uh, Steve, if you need to give me a shout, otherwise over to you. Right. Thank you very much, David. And um, you know, following on from what David's just said, the app suite that we've got is designed for all councils, whether you're a, a very small community council through parishes, small to large towns, small to large, and in, you know, and including some 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 small you know of the smaller cities as well. So these apps aren't just restricted to. Um, the larger town, you know, the, the budget, we, we, we've geared them towards everybody. So what we've, we've been looking at recently is one of the apps from the Microsoft 365 uh, suite. And on the tech, the Clark's Tech Forum, I, I hope a, a lot of you are members of on, on um, social, on Facebook. On there, we, I had a poll up earlier on to see what we wanted to um, chat about this week. And, and most people wanted to look at um, to do so we we will be looking at that um very shortly uh, last month we did bookings and we're hoping to have we we had a, a lovely clerk on from a council she's she saw the happy hour looked at bookings thought that looked really really useful for her sent in um using the link to to book a, a, a slot with us to have a chat we had a conversation we walked her through using bookings she's now using that to manage all of her face to face and um, virtual meetings with, with with members of the public and internally. So um, her good example was she had a lot of people wishing to come and view allotment plots on the waiting list. She can now send them a dedicated booking link for the waiting list so that they could book a slot. They could see when they could go to the allotments and they could see um, and she could show them around without them coming through varying channels through email, through messages on social media or through um, uh, voicemails left. She had this one one touch point for the, her uh, residents, which again was a fantastic use and came out of a, a 15 minute session um, on here, just talking about bookings that she was complete. And I think many people were completely unaware of. So we'll, all the other ones you see on there, we've got Delve Lists, OneNote and, and Planner and Tasks, which of course To Do comes under and shifts. So we will look at all of those over the coming months um, in the happy hour and then from our suite of apps we've got at the moment there are six published so they are on the microsoft um, app store um, so you can go and have a look at them and read about them and, and, and look at some pictures of them and of course they're available for all people that have microsoft 365 uh, if you're running with teams you can use these apps these apps are available to you and there's no extra microsoft licensing to have the apps they are all available um, to you in your 365 license um, and we set our we have a license fee uh, per user per app and that's exceptionally reasonable um, and we're still running our happy hour offer where if you purchase two licenses, you'll get a third one free. So that's exceptionally good value. And one thing I always forget, councillors get free access to the apps. So if you're a very small council and say the clerk exceptionally busy, I know you always are, and you may have a couple of councillors help you out doing a couple of the the day to day jobs, the week to week inspections, they can use the apps for free. There is no license cost to them. So that, that's something again we, we're doing to help because again we realise the pressures on some of the smaller councils. They just have not. There's just not enough days in the clerk's you know hours in the clerk's day to to do every job. So we hope that helps. So our app of the month to do right. If you're not familiar with to do um, or some of the, the these are the smaller. I, got, I call the larger apps things like Outlook, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint. Most people are familiar with them. And then you've got this this smaller suite of apps and to, to do is one of them. So it's a daily 
as, as we can see, you know, it helps you plan your day. Um, you can do it online, you can do it offline. There's a nice mobile app for it. It works with Outlook and it works with Planner. So what I'm going to very, very quickly do is share my screen. and I'm going to walk a few of us through it. So I'm going to pop myself down in the bottom corner and I should get that out of the way. So here is Microsoft to do. And as we can see down behind me here, it says Microsoft to do the happy hours coming up. So it's reminded me having it running it. It's told me down here that I've got that coming up so I can choose. Well, I can complete that because I'm doing um, the happy hour now and it will disappear off my list. So my day, I haven't had a very exciting day. Tesco's I had to go and get some new glasses earlier on. And of course, we have the happy hour and we're all here now. And I've also got a reminder that I need to do Thomas's timesheets for him for Tuesday by 10 o'clock. He wanted some assistance with those. So that's my day. Now, I've got a couple of important tasks that I put in here. I've got a council that I've got to do an app deployment with. I'm going to see them. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to, to, to coming out and, and, and again, you know, meeting face to face now that that's obviously possible. And I've got a task here. I need to do some new views. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at this. I've got some planned events that are coming up so I can see what's coming up in the future. And these are jobs I've given myself to do. So these are bits I'm, I'm, I want to look at or I want to keep an eye on. I, I've got them on my list. Now, this is where the it gets really, really good. These are emails that I've flagged. I've flagged quite a few as we can see. I shall speed up and down them. And what that basically means is where I've got an email that's come into me. If I thought, oh, that's this Microsoft apps follow. This is really important. I can highlight that and make that a favorite. And then I can choose to have it show in here. I can have it show in Outlook and have it flagged as a favorite. I might think to myself, oh, OK, this is I, I want to look into this more. I can go and look at this and it will open it in Outlook. And again, as I come down over them, it will tell me what one has created that um, entry here in um, time. So I can click and look and see what I wanted to do. Then I can look at this one here. I can. This was opened in Outlook. It tells me everything that I need to know. Again, with I'm trying to find another one that I, I, I may have. So this most of these have obviously come from Outlook. So where I've flagged an email in Outlook, I can then prioritize on last week. I want to keep up to date with everybody. And of course, I want to see what I've got coming up that I might have flagged very, very recently. So that's all in here. Tasks then comes from that. I've got my timesheet. And I've put a couple in here. I've got a call from David. I've got some apps that we want to deploy with Thomas. And again, these are all um, you can have internal or external people on here. I'm going to review one of our apps. I want to understand how something. So these are all my tasks that I've got in here. So I might want to look at that and I can add it to my day. I can repeat it. So I think I like to talk to David. I'll remind myself tomorrow that I want to talk to him and I'll do it every week. We'll do it every Saturday, let's say. I can add that to my day because I think that's quite important and I want to catch up with David. Going back, as we can see, that team's call has appeared up here um, from David and it's still in my task list and it's still up here in my day. We can also create other lists that go hand in hand with um, lists you may have in other applications. So. I have a list here. So for green spaces, we're looking at power pages. This is a, a new Microsoft product that's just about to launch that looks extremely exciting and, and extremely powerful and flexible. So we're looking to see how that might work for some of our public integrations um, that we have. And for park inspections, I want to make sure you can't delete the sites if there's an inspection or a repair active. So I need to speak to the development team on that and I've put it under a list here where I am working. Now on that list, I might think to myself, oh, I want to send someone else to share that list. I can invite them by email. I can copy the link and paste it and I can manage their access. So I can have, you know, if the clerk, if you have an assistant or a couple of counselors that are working with you from within here, you are then able to share your list. Now you might want to share it so that they can just view it. 
So you say these are my my jobs for the week or my jobs for the day, and you can see what I'm doing. So that if they want to arrange um, to come and see you to talk about something, they've got a rough idea of what you will be doing. And you can do that for a variety of lists. These are exceptionally um, easy to do. And one of the other bits I was going to, we were talking um, earlier under tasks. As we can see on my list here, these all talk to other apps. So I created this earlier on and we were talking about it in um, in views. I've got the, oh, I'm trying to think where I've moved it now. I've, I've probably moved it or completed it. It's, it's, that's the sort of day. Um, so in here we go, new view. So in here, this came from Teams and it's in Planner. So I'm working on making something here in Planner. It's automatically assigned it to me where I've added myself down here into my task list, which then, of course, from there, I can add a note and I can add it to my day again. So in my day, I now know that I've got this to concentrate on. If I complete it in here, it's completed in here. So again, another Microsoft app that's talking to each other. And if I bring up my Outlook email, as we can see here, it's integrated into Outlook and it's it's built in the side menu. So lots of you that are using the latest version of 365, you will see this version up there. So that allows me to look in Outlook. I can see what's going on here. I've received my my um, deployment process email, everybody understands what they're doing, including me. If I now tick that, it will take it off there and it will disappear from all of the tasks. And remember what we were saying earlier, on, a lot of this is real time. So I'm looking in here and I think the pre requirements I complete and as I complete them, they will disappear off this list as well in tasks in um, planner. So that is to do it like i say it's exceptionally powerful and and again something not many people um really you know know that exists you know it's a, if you just go to your start menu and, and type to do um it will appear the settings that it comes with um when you first started are, are, are pretty good for most people um you can pin it to your taskbar so you've got easy access i have mine down the bottom of my screen and again, I can choose what I look at and what it's connect to. So I want anything in planner that's assigned to me. I want that in my to do list because I'm going to be doing it. And the same with flagged email. If I flagged an email, I want to know about that in my um, my to do app. So and Steve, I was going to yeah. mention as well, um, it links in really nicely with, uh, well, as we mentioned, Planner. have we done an event on Planner yet? Have you gone we haven't done, Planner? I think, I think that might be nice to show show some people is, is Planner working. Yeah, we've had some successes with Planner actually with, uh, once we've modernised the council with uh, clerk's offices, you know, just using Planner to, to manage events or manage the, uh, um, you know, projects within the council. Uh, but then when you assign tasks in Planner, you can assign them to individuals in to do which is quite nice actually so yes. it all links together as well and uh, equally uh, the agenda pack solution we we mentioned uh, when you assign a task for a follow uh, you know from a, from a meeting it goes into that person's to do and into a planner as well so it's that that full link up there so uh, and the app for for to do is actually really nice actually i've got it on my phone and you've got it in yours only steve and it's yes. very slick very easy so you can just look at what tasks you've got or what's been assigned by you uh, very easily so um yeah i just thought i'd mention that steve but uh, do you want me to share my screen and uh, carry on through the presentation yeah i'm just i would just say rachel fletcher's just asked how she gets to see it so what I, i'm just going to do is show um if she just if it, rachel if you just or anyone else wishing to look at um to do if you're running obviously microsoft um uh, windows with um, microsoft 365 installed just typing to do or two even in the start menu should give you the option to load um microsoft to do if not if you start up your red um Office icon, uh, the O, the large O, on there under. I think it's more apps or all apps. It will appear um, on the screen, and you can start it from there. If not, there are ways of. of um, I think you can open that. You can do them from the store, David. Is it's part of the the suite apps? You can open them um, there. But while I'm, we, we go through this, I'll, I'll David will probably have a quick look for me to see 
exactly where it's it's tucked it, away. Yeah, it's in multiple places. You could get it in Teams. Um, it's under tasks to do in Teams. Um, I, I let me just quickly flag up. I'll bring up our cloud account. So here's our cloudy council account here. This is our fake council. Uh, and um, if I go to uh, here, it tasks. There we go. Tasks by planner. And if you go there, you can see tasks assigned to me. Uh, ones that are my personal tasks. Uh, important. This is our Clark account. You know the health and safety review here. But I'm not going to go too much into more to planner because that's something that um, I know Steve will talk about probably another day. So um, brilliant. There we go. So that's uh, to do. Uh, lovely little app. And um, if anyone wants to sort of um, put forward any uh, anything else that Steve should delve into um, in the Clark Tech form, which we'll mention later, um, please do sort of put that forward as a suggestion. Really. So. Uh, Great, there we go. So carry on, Steve, over to you. <laughs> right. Just answering a very quick question. <laughs> no worries. In the that's chat. Fine. Right, okay. So our suite of council apps. Um, thank you, David. Um, yeah, I do. I think we'll look at Planner again. I think that's an important app, and I think a lot of um, councils will, will, will benefit from um, its, its management of um, both events, uh, agenda items, uh, and, and general sort of day to day operations. Um, so our suite of apps. So what have we done? So they work for every, any size council. They're very, very cost effective. There's one price for all. Um, you know, we, we don't base it on anything. It has a fixed price and, 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 and that's it. They're off the shelf. So these are ready. These are ready made um, oven baked, as someone um, told me recently, ready to go. Um, we, you know, we, we can send you them and you can install them within, or we can help you install them or we will fully manage them uh, for you. They're securely built on, on Microsoft 365. So again, this is a couple of questions we've had on these. The data is all yours in your tenant. It's not with Cloudy, it's not with anyone externally. It's all in your Microsoft tenant. So any of your data protection policies, your data retention policies, this cut this data is covered and protected by that is it's, it's not shared with us so again secure you know microsoft 365 is 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 as secure as a cloud platform can possibly be and this data sits inside that in your tenant you know and again basic services that councils do a lot of councils have parts allotments and cemeteries that you know they're they're, they're fairly sort of evenly spread across most councils so we have a an app for them we have a a very nice asset management app um, that, that, that's improving a uh, week on week with the when the team give it you know they, they go in and think oh we'll add this feature or, or we'll improve this so um, we covered that uh, I think last month um, it's well worth looking at the video it's really really good um, and we covered that with uh, park inspections and the um, asset manager I, I think at the same time but we've linked the two together so the park inspection app and the asset manager work together our plan is that all of our apps will that have physical items assets that the council has they will all be managed centrally manageable by the asset manager so those of you that are clerks and rfos or just rfos you might manage the council's assets and inventory you could manage it using the asset manager and maybe the assistant clerk or an officer or or maybe one of the councillors carries out the actual inspections they will then be able to inspect those items that you're managing for them they won't have to worry um about setting them all, all up they will be in there so this month we're going to be uh, looking at allotment management i'm going to give it you know it's, this is going to be a very brief overview of, of what um allotment management does so what i shall do is quickly pop into and share my screen again and um ping myself down the bottom out of um the way so Allotment management. For those of you that have seen our park inspection or asset manager app or looked at the screenshots in the presentation, the family resemblance is, is there straight away. So if you're familiar with using one, you'll be familiar with using the other apps in the suite. A very quick dashboard giving you an idea of what's going on, sites by size, fairly evenly split. We've then got a chart on requests. We've then got the number of tenants, sites requests and plots so again a very quick dashboard for you um, to look at let's focus on tenants first we'll, we'll, we'll do it in the order in which the um the menu is laid out so here's our tenant screen so if we choose um sabrina this tells us all about sabrina we've got her information where she lives 
all of her details. Um, she's no longer, sadly, um, a tenant of the council. She doesn't have um, a plot with us. And if she did, this was her um, preference. Let's go and look at um, Yvette. So, OK, so Yvette is an active um, tenant. She's on the waiting list and we've captured all of her information. So we know that she's on the electoral register locally so that she might be um, you know, above other people that aren't on uh, the local list. She might get a discount because she's a local resident. So different councils have different um, policies. And as we can see, she's been really, really lucky and has got herself a plot. So here we go. At the same site, she, she, you know, the park allotment, she's got plot six. It started then, she paid £100. So again, all that important information that um, councils look for in their management go in here. Have they had letters? Have they had a termination letter sent to them? Um, have they had their agreements? And these can be attached here. So, you know, they, they may have signed up electronically online, downloaded the PDF and uh, they're happy with it. You could upload that here. They may have come in and signed some physical paperwork. I know many people that have allotments like to come and sign paperwork and pay in cash. Um, so again, they may have come and signed this. It could be then scanned and, and attached in here, or it could be in a document reference folder where you physical copies are kept in the notes. You could say, you know, in, in Clark's office in drawer two or, or, in, or in allotment file. So that's how we, we, we've got this information here about a variety of tenants. We can see if they've got plots straight away, as you can see, there's nothing here. We can go down and have a look to see um, have they got anything? Do they have a preference? And this is across the board. So we can go and see they're a tenant. Coming back up to the top, we can see what plot they're a tenant for. That pay, they paid their deposit. They've not had any letters, so they're really good. They haven't. They're not terminating, and so forth. So we 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 have all this information in one easy to find place inside the app. Sites again. Those of you who are familiar with our um, other apps will recognize that the, the view here, we've got a list of sites and then we've got some data. In here, of course, we've got the sizes of the sites, its location, the rent tariff, the water tariff, waste tariff. So all, again, this important information that a lot of people capture for their um, allotments can be catered for. Or if you don't, you can you can leave that information out. It doesn't need to be there. The, the basics are required. Beyond that, you don't need to um, fill anything out and you can work out from here varying costs. It, it does some calculation on on what water tariff and uh, rent tariffs would be for your sites. Plots then we have obviously within the sites, we have it in, laid out in quite a nice way. It's quite, 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 you know, easy to see. We can see what's going on. Its status obviously is recognizable by the color of the plot and we can filter by site or we can filter by status. So we might want to know what, what plots are vacant. Well, here's our vacant plot. So we've got four across our, five across our suite of sites that are available um, to people. Have we got, we've got a couple that are out on offer at the moment um, to prospective new tenants. We might have one that's obviously unusable due to, you know, varying reasons. We, you know, we, we, you know, there may be something stored on it for now. And, you know, you may have had some type one delivered or something and, it, and it's on a plot um, ready for you. So you can take us a, a plot out of um, out of action. And then, of course, the plots that are left. And we can, again, quickly go and see what type of plot. This is a starter plot. It has shared access to it. The totals that we would be expecting um, to get for that and you know, last time it was inspected, what happened? So they're on notice, so they might not be keeping their um, tenancy, you know, uh, you know, as you know, their allotment as, as as well as hope. So here we have another one. So let's share. It's a starter plot again. And as we can see, the data is filled in here for the amounts and so forth. We can see they've got a greenhouse and again, um, another one that is on notice. So again, very simple way of, of looking at it. We can go and look at again with the vacant ones. Um, that's again a starter plot and we can see here it's new start of it and we can attach some pictures to see the the general condition of that plot requests so someone may come in and say oh i'd like um, a greenhouse please on my um, allotment plot 
all the details of that if they go to council for the decision um, the clerk can then fill this in and show it as approved or refused or maybe it's pending so it's coming up at the next one so again you can have a quick view, overview of the status so if a resident was to say oh how am i getting on with my um or how am I getting on with my um, greenhouse request or my polytunnel? You can say, oh, well, your greenhouse, yes, that's absolutely no problem. You can have that. The polytunnels um, pending. So maintenance. Everyone carries out some maintenance on their allotments. This might be uh, direct or indirect maintenance. Again, all of that can be tracked here. Um, there could be a reason um, why. So we could look in and, and say, um, here's a good example, the perimeter fence is having some work done. There's a purchase order, how much it's going to cost um, the site. And again, some pictures can be attached of that maintenance. So if it's a fence or a water butt or, or, or another part of the allotment, you can note that down here in a maintenance log. Same really goes for inspections. We're going to wander out and we do a monthly inspection. We've had a little look around at plot one. The condition is good. There's nothing attached. We've got another inspection here. There might be a couple of items made, you know, made a note of. It just needs looking at next time. And the same here. This one's vacant. It's been inspected. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Again, you know, it, it lets the clerk or a, or a prospective person know the condition of it. We've done some enhanced reports in um, allotment management, and these reports are being fed back into the other apps. So um, those of you that have seen Park Inspection Asset Manager or, or Green Spaces, this style of reporting is being put into those as well. So we can see here a quick view of vacant plots. So some of you um, might have more than one allotment plot. You might have several allotment plots. Um, you may have many allotment plots. This allows you very, very quickly to look down the vacant plots to see exactly um, what you've got. Who's on your waiting list? Again, you can see what site preference they've got using the two. You can go and say, well, currently both of those are waiting for Stafford Road. And unfortunately, at this time, we haven't got anything in Stafford Road, but we could offer you an alternative um, plot. Outstanding rent. How many people haven't paid now again? Um, you know, you may only collect rent once a year um, at, at your annual allotment meeting, um, or you may collect it by direct debit monthly. You know, there's varying ways of doing this. In here, it's a, it's just a quick way of keeping track of those that may 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 be slightly sort of forgetful when it comes to um, settling um, up that that allotment um, bill. First and second letters. So again, they've had a bonfire and they've not cultivated, so they've had a letter. Um, sent to them. We all know that the, the step process that we have to go through with allotment holders, and and this helps go with that, with dates and so forth, and and, and um, allows you to follow the processes properly. Agreements again. Has someone sent an agreement back? Yes, they have. They Aylesbury allotments are at. They've got one plot or plot one, and that has um, come back. Totals basically allows to look at deposit and rent totals. It was something we were asked um, as part of um, uh, Council's agar that they wanted to look at the let totals very quickly. So we, we, we put some um, small a small report together at the end for them that allowed them to see this really, really quickly. The rest of the menus are very, very uh, are, are standard. We have our standard page where you can um, request features or if you have any problems or need support. The terms and conditions obviously of all of our apps and back to the main screen as we can see that is effectively um the allotment um management app so what i shall do is ping that off and we'll go back to the show david uh great thanks for that steve um so yeah great tour there i'll just share my screen so you can see uh just a highlight there and um of the key features isn't it steve and all of yes. apps are built on microsoft platform they're free for counselors to use um and yeah uh, we're really rapidly working through the improvements on these as well aren't we because they're so easy to build and um something that isn't in the presentation today but um we're really proud of the work we do with these apps because uh we, we actually link them to our charity the cloudy foundation where we actually have students checking in 
after school for 45 minutes with engineers learning the process of building applications uh, and we're starting to actually work with partner councils as well we work with Stamford Town Council on a cemetery app aren't we Steve which is really are, exciting, yes. very uh, exciting involving our, our charitable foundation so some great news to come out of there but um, Steve I'll let you carry on through it there and um, go on to the next topic really Thank you. I, know, I, go. I, I know we've got um, well as I mentioned earlier on we've got a couple of special offers um, going on so We've got three for two. So whether you're an existing or a new customer, we do three for two deal on on the app. So if you happen to take, say, park inspections and allotments, um, you could have asset manager or maybe green spaces, or you might be really interested in cemeteries. Take the two and wait for um, the cemeteries app to be released to the suite and take it at that time. Three months, three use, so 90 days you can use the apps for. Sorry, <laughs> David sped right past me there. He's going to have to get Sorry, to go Steve. back now. <laughs> yeah. I was really, I had memorized it, but. There you go, mate. Yeah. So 90 days use on on um, the apps for new customers. So it's a very decent try before you buy, period. Um, and existing customers, if you've got a, a 365 subscription with us, you get 5% discount um, on those apps. And we're also giving you, uh, you know, for, because you're an existing customer, will import you know your pre-data import, so the the basic sort of data um, import into the apps, um, which saves to you know two hundred and fifty pounds. It is it, it, it has a god. We're giving you that as an existing customer, so it's just showing what we're doing. But the three for two apps, whether you're new or existing, yeah, you, you know you 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 all get the same deal. You know, so that that's a fantastic opportunity, and uh, I think one of our most popular, isn't it, David? Most people tend to to go for that when they when they see what they have available to them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a whole suite which we're, we're growing constantly um, and uh, we're adding things like risk registers, but it's just creating the same, you know, interface. They're all linked together. They're all in your own 36510. The data doesn't leave your account, all these sorts of wonderful things. So, um, yeah, really excited. So, yeah, over to you, Steve, to talk about a few things that since the council elections we we, we brought out um, just to help councils, really, isn't it, Steve? So. I'm just answering every time. I'm just answering some more questions. What so, we'll right, do okay. is we'll, we'll do the questions at the end, maybe. We'll, we'll go through them. I've been dropping a few little bits in there, but I yeah. think that's the whole point of this session. So we'll try and wrap things up pretty quickly so we can Indeed. answer questions Indeed. and get some some so, calls. So yeah. the Council of Tech Pack. So this this is dope. So part of our 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 position is you know we've got the apps. You've got the apps. So you've got your three six five. You've got some apps. What do you run them on? What what do they work on? You know, really, really well. And this was one of the the the, the, the sort of things we looked at the data in the the poll we put up in the the Clark's Tech Forum. You know, a lot of councils people are running with their own kit, um, and those devices may not be. You know, they may not be the, the you know the, the the best. You know, they might be quite an, an elderly laptop that they they use. You know, you're using for email. Um, they may not be, you know, the most modern operating, you know, that a lot of them could be, say, Windows 7 or, or or even slightly older, you know, one of those old machines that people have kept going. So we've looked at this and thought, right, we want to try and, and standardize this this tech pack offering. So we've gone we've gone and looked, we've looked through a large number of devices um, and we've trialed some with uh, some of the councils that we've worked with. And we've had some fantastic feedback. Um, and the the tablet, the the, the the Novo there, that's a great tablet. It's it's ideal. It, it, it's it's transportable. It's got a really really good battery life, and it, you know, the, with connected to the keyboard, it it becomes it becomes very easy to use for a tablet. We know a lot of people are quite shy of using iPads because of the touching on the screen or the need to purchase um the rather expensive Apple keyboard um to go with it to make it a, a, a bit more um user friendly and then we've got two microsoft products now we've got the surface i'll go to the right we've got the surface go laptop which is a lovely laptop for those of you that were at the slcc management in action conference and david was over in essex um beginning yep. of the week these devices were there we were you I, I personally i was using the surface go laptop it was absolutely fantastic we were talking to a lot of people a lovely screen, a lovely keyboard, and and it lasted, you know, battery all day. It was an absolute pleasure to use. And then the Surface Go threes. Now these are Microsoft's, I suppose, com direct competitor for an iPad, and they are brilliant. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, we've, I, I, I can't, we, we, we've sold nearly fifty already, haven't we, David? It's got to be approaching that nearly now. Mm -hmm. They are going out in it, as soon as we can get hold of them. They are going out. We're configuring them, setting them up, securing them for the councils, and they are off. They are on their way out. 
they are brilliant. Um, you get the, the keyboard snaps off. It's, it's magnetic to the bottom. Um, the same with the pen and the charger that, that they, they are magnetic. They can clip on the side. Um, again, great battery life, great screen. Runs Windows 10 or 11, so they're very, very up to date. Run all Office apps, fantastic. So if you're a Microsoft 365 Outlook user or Word user, absolutely brilliant. And, and, and you know, we just can't get enough of them, can we, David? They are yeah, extremely they're, popular. They're great bits of gear. And one of the things we're trying to do is it's a bit of a standardization to the sector. So the good products, good vendors, good partners um, uh, that know that the products have been used and tried and tested by lots of councils and individuals. So, yeah, it, it, these are really popular, especially when you start to think about how to digitalize your council and go paperless and all these wonderful things. So, yeah, we, we put a bit of thought into this and hopefully uh, can, can assist. And we're happy just to jump in the car and bring them down for you to play with them with your council as well. So if your chair, vice chair, any tech accountants wants to have a little go before they commit to anything, we're happy to just jump in the car and bring them down, which we've done plenty of times before as well. Yes. So, um, that, right, let me just, I'm keen to get some questions in at the end. And we've also got our, our councillor toolkit, um, which basically has a number of different services we provide as being a cloudy customer. We've got access to our e-learning portal and we've got a, a great event next week where we're being joined by a councillor who's using our e-learning portal. All cloudy councils get access free of charge to our, our portal, which has learning pathways and these lovely sort of uh, um, just short videos, hundreds of them, uh, around all the different things 365 can do for you. Um, and for larger councils, we can train a, a manager to be able to create, um, you know, drip campaigns, learning campaigns, so that people can upskill the, the staff and the councillors. And obviously great for new councillors as they join. We've got the monthly skills boost sessions as well, as well as all the various webinars that we provide, um, uh, you know, like these, like we're on today. So um, there we go. And then, um, Steve, do you want to talk about the tech forum? Because I know you're very active in that forum. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, the Clark Tech Forum. So we've got our, our forum on, on Facebook. Um, so those of you that do social media, um, you know, we would invite you to come and join us in the in the tech forum. And the, the it's a very it's a very relaxed environment. You know, as, as David was saying earlier on, it, 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 we're trying to bust through all this jargon that you you hear so commonly um used in in technical circles and we, and we want to get it to so that you understand uh you know what you've got what you're using and maybe what you might need you know you, you may know that you've got a you're managing something and you and there must be an act to do it out there you know we, we want to chat about it you know on the clark's tech forum and and see what help we can um offer you there and, you know as you could see um today 57 percent of the votes were, were, were for to do um so you know you've driven this show so um you know not 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 only you know are we are we you know listening to what um you want to you you're having a direct input you know and again if there's a topic that emerges in there that you'd like to talk about maybe as david was saying planner or or, or, or bookings again or maybe you know um accessible web web apps and, and accessible websites we are more than happy to put that into the happy hour it's not just apps you know we can talk about a lot of these parts that, that are an app and um the, you know the, the feedback we get on the clark's tech forum that's important to us you know it allows us it's that two-way connection and um again some some more experienced clerks may have a lot of you know knowledge in the sector we encourage you to share that with you know maybe some new you know or junior clerks that you know that are just starting out on, on the journey you know where you found this package helped or this package wasn't as good as we hoped or but this package offered exceptionally good value for money for us sharing that sort of information you know amongst us all makes a massive difference and again we we, we know we're active in there and, and we will you know dip in and out you know when we can and um see how you know we can assist the questions that you know david o is very keen to get to the q a today it's answering those sort of questions so if you've got something that you think i wonder if Put it on the Clark's Tech Forum. Come and join the Clark's Tech Forum if you're not already a member. Put it on there. Put you know, put put put, put a chat out, and we'll come and have a look and see what we can um, help you with. Absolutely, Steve. That's that's definitely right. And there we have Helen from SLCC talking about. I think their 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 business voice telephone system, the Microsoft yes. telephone system they've got there. And uh, she came and joined us uh, for an event earlier in the year, um, and was talking. We put the video there on on the on the page as well, which you talked about the benefits to using it. So yeah, really excited space. We'd love, as Steve mentioned, to, to see you there and have a conversation. So um, 
Great. Let's move on to the next bit. I think we're nearly there now. It's flown by. Um, yeah, Q&A. So I, I know, um, uh, Rachel, thank you so much for your questions there. I, I think both Steve and I have been trying to sort of type away there, but we're happy to, you know, we've got another 10 minutes to answer any questions that you've got uh, uh, at all about anything we've discussed or anything you'd like to hear about. One thing I was going to say, for those of you that can't find um, to do, if you open the Microsoft Store, so that's um, the white icon normally on your taskbar or on your start menu that's got uh, the Microsoft colored flag on it and like a handle, like a, like a basket. If you open the Microsoft Store and in the search bar at the top, once you're, you're signed in, which should be probably automatically, type to do, um, two words, two space do, hit enter and then you'll see microsoft to do list tasks and reminders so i might get actually david to do There's that a couple here right. yeah so if you don't see it here if you go to, to apps and type in um to do um you know you see tasks there and you can just click on that yep. and uh, add it in like i've already done which i think i've already got so that's can you open the the microsoft store on on there we where go. you are as well david from your start menu um, yeah of course might be the start menu or task taskbar I'm yeah, here it is. So, oh, no, that's our dynamics. Um, that's the wrong one. Here we go. So, if I open up the Microsoft so Store, is this one I here? I think this is probably, Rachel, what you need to do. So, once um, David, so if David types to do in the top and hits enter, we should, there we go. So, this is if you haven't got it already on your start menu and openable. So, Rachel, as you said, you don't want to open it via the browser. You can choose get or open. Um, there you go. from in there so as david needs an update it will go and do that so for those of you that want to go and install to do and and, and have a play around with the app itself go to the microsoft store to sign in if you're not already signed in type to do as david's just done it will install it. it's not a massive app it's also available from the app stores on uh, google play and um, the app store on apple um, and the mobile app is is absolutely fantastic um talks and links to everything works brilliantly um, and and gives you a very quick overview of your day. You, you, and as we can see, yeah, David's got his, it's asking, you know, do you want it on your taskbar? It's up and running. And it's given Dave, you know, his his grocery list to remind him what he's going I, to do. I need some of those, yeah. <laughs> this week. But, Suggestions, I like that. <laughs> yeah, so it's got that. And then to link it, so what we'll do if David goes over and clicks on his um, name at the top, if it's nearly... I've finished and under settings. So it's sync it right. If it comes down, you'll see what it's linked to. There we go. So on David, it's linked to his planner, but David might want his flagged and like you may, you might want your flagged email there as well. Mm -hmm. You can turn it on from inside that app. So if you flag any emails as important, they will appear on the left as important. So these are all the things that have been assigned to me. Assigned to you. So, yeah, whether they're from Planner or other apps that you can be tagged or assigned in, that's um, cool. where we yeah. do it. Great. Well, I've said the same to then, Steve, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I was going to say. And uh, no, you don't have to have 365 with yourself, David. You said that, didn't you? As long as yeah. you've got a Microsoft 365 subscription and valid licenses from Microsoft, our apps will work with um, within your tenant. Um, Right, David. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much. Um, unless anyone has any more questions, we'll we'll we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll send out a recording of this session to everyone, um, so uh, so they can re-record it or re-listen to it because people obviously we we had about twenty signups, but it's always the way. A lot of people just sign up just to get the recording. Um, but we will stay in touch as well if you don't mind. And when we do an event, we'll send out you know just a little nudge about the event happening or just about things that are going on here at Cloudy. So we'll, we will stay in touch in the future. But um, otherwise, thanks ever so much for joining us. Oh, we have another question. How much are the subscriptions? Um, so, yeah, so Steve, how much are the subscriptions? Right, OK, so our apps, they're £10 per active user. So that we class an active user as anyone who's not either a volunteer or a counsellor. So a staff member, a clerk or an IFO, it's £10 per app per month. So if you take park inspections for the year as a clerk, it's £120. If you took asset manager as well, it'd be 240. And if you then took allotments, that would be your three apps. So that would be your third one free. Um, term wise, you can you can chop and change. So, you know, you, if you, as long as you have an active app subscription and you might like oh, it's asset manager, but you're not using it as much as you thought, and you might want to move over to green spaces, you can transfer over to that within your um, term. And uh, yeah, same same charge for all. 
And again, uh, cloudy customers, if you're an existing cloudy customer, you get a 5% a discount on that. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. And we also we haven't really mentioned we do a bookings app as well. So um, we got there's two there's two types of bookings app. There's a free one that comes with Microsoft that doesn't handle money, um, but handles the administration. Microsoft bookings. Uh, have we done? We did bookings. Yeah, we did a, a, we have done a couple bookings. of yeah, weeks. We, we're going to have we're yeah. going to have Sarah on in the future, aren't we? Yeah, she's yeah. Gonna, she's going to show everybody um, how well she got on. Yeah, and like you said, um, I, I was speaking to Sarah a couple of weeks ago and she said how it's been really useful to book out um, uh, visits to allotments and cemeteries via the bookings link that goes out. It's really cool. But um, I hope that's answered your question around the cost. So £10 with discounts available, um, yeah, £10 per month with discounts stacked if you need them. So uh, wonderful. Please do get in touch if you have any questions, both my, myself and Steve are on the social or on LinkedIn or just drop us an email after the event. But otherwise, you know, enjoy the rest of your day and weekend and uh, have a great one. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, all. Bye-bye now.